Right, this is what we call royal iced coating of a cake. So as you coat, you need to turn the turntable with one hand and paddle the icing with the other. So and as you do, you do small paddles and then once you've gone round once, you can see that the icing, the air bubbles, will have disappeared almost. So the next stage is then to use a straight edge. So if you're fantastic at plastering, you'll be marvellous at doing royal ice cakes. So with the same edge of the straight edge, you then do it back and forth to try and still eliminate the air bubbles. And then when you think it's ready, take it off and you've got a nice smooth surface. So always clean as you go, because <laughs> you never know what goes wrong if you need your tools fast. So clean up the sides, just so that we've got a nice clean surface again, because royal icing dries very hard basically. It's the only icing what is brittle. So from now we're going to do the sides. Ideally it's good to actually leave it to dry in between but today I'll show you the only method. So unfortunately you can't see me paddling. But it's exactly the same as the top all the way around to disperse the air bubbles again and then you will see it becomes a nicer surface. So this time instead of using a straight edge we're going to use a side scraper and create a similar edge. So this one makes you feel very uncomfortable but you have to do it in one motion otherwise you will get lines in your icing and then you need another side scraper to just take off the bottom edge as a royal icing cake should take about two or three coats individually of a top and a side coat. So once you've done that with the side scraper, just neaten the edge so that the next stage of royal icing will go on smoothly. So this cake is actually going to have some royal ice squirrels on the top and the bottom. So to start with you would normally use a template but today we're just going to just freestyle. just to get a rough measurement for S and C scrolls. I've done this far too many times because I know measurements. So when you actually do a scroll you have to roughly put pressure on but keep the constant pressure, but gradually build up the pressure to lessen the pressure, which I will demonstrate. So that is an S scroll. So 
So as you can see, go all the way around for your markings. Some of the markings I've covered up, but that's fine because technically an S scroll is three times bigger than a C scroll. So we just need to add in the C scroll. So once you've gone round, we'll then prepare the next stage, which is a scrape pipe. This scrape pipe allows the next stage to go on smoother overall icing. So with the scrape pipe, you actually introduce the shape, enhance the shape what you've already got. So as you can see, it shows a nice a shape now. So go all the way around again. And when you scrape pipe, you, you're not actually scraping right into the actual scroll. You're just hovering over the top. And if you lay on the icing and do drop piping, you will see holes appear through the actual scroll. So that's the first stage. The next stage is to put the next layer on to also enhance. And this is drop piping. This is so that it appears smooth lines. So always overlap onto the next scroll because everything needs to be joined. So a cake like this only takes a matter of moments once you master the technique. And you can do smaller squirrels, you can do everything with just these couple of tubes. So the last one. So as you can see, there's a nice shape to that. So we're going to start on the bottom and to do a half moon scroll. So the measurements what we have from the top, we're going to just mirror at the bottom. So back to the actual star tube to create a half moon, which is a graduated barrel. So you start off and then graduate bigger, and then when you hit the middle, you need to graduate smaller. So then once you've done this layer, then you also scrape pipe, which also creates a smoother surface. So then scrape pipe to create the shape like before and then the next layer can go on. So 
we're going back to the plain tube to drop pipe to give more shape and then in a moment we will put a colour on So we will put the colour on next and then we will finish off the cake. So give it a slight bit of colour just to enhance exactly what you've done previously. So you can see that lifts out your shape and the drop piping once again shows a nice smooth line. So the secret is balancing up the pressure because if you don't squeeze hard enough then the pressure will break. Also if you're not, if you're too quick for the tube, the pressure will break. So it's a nice even balance between the pressure you're squeezing and obviously the speed you are going. So from there, that's creating a really pretty cake. So to also enhance a royal ice cake you can put graduation lines on. So a graduation line is what you put in the middle to obviously enhance the shape of the squirrels and it all fits together. So I'll just finish off the bottom. So all the way around. So always have it at the front of you because then it, you won't go off with the measurements. The last one. So from that, we're now going to introduce a rope pipe on the side. So from this you don't need no templates or anything because you're following the guide of your scroll. So the secret to this is obviously even pressure and also the speed again. Follow up and down with the squirrels just to cover the edge of the cake. And then in between that, just to enhance again, 
we would use the plain tube to then do a small barrel but a plain barrel. way around. Stop and start where you feel necessary and then latch back on. So then we're going to repeat that technique at the bottom just to give these bottom half moon barrels a little bit of balance between the top and the bottom of the cake. So occasionally you might get an air bubble, so just put a little bit of icing into it. And that's it. That's done. So I'm just going to show you two lines of the graduation lines. You would normally, traditionally, do three because it just enhances it a little bit more. So always start with the line above your C-scroll all the way around the cake. As it's easier to do this part then to do it as you go. If you do it as you go, then you start losing the shape off. So you're just following the shape again of your squirrels. just enhances the shape. Still drop piping as that creates a smooth line. So then once you've done this you repeat one line next to. Ideally you're supposed to repeat three but I'll just show you two lines today. And if you do get an air bubble, just straighten it out and latch on and just continue to pipe that line. Right, so now we're just going to repeat a little bit of colour next to and also on top of the line that is piped. For this line, you don't need to do any particular order. So stop and start because then that gives a nice sharp line. And it needs to be a tube thickness in between. So already that's created a nice sharp enhancement to your squirrels which match. So 
So before you know it, you're almost done. So lots of practice is needed when it comes to graduation lines because you go from a short line to a bigger line. So then the last line, so pipe on top of the original line what you have piped. So the secret to drop piping is take a quarter off the line what needed. So if I have a drop pipe in the air, I know to stop pressure about here. And then another line will fit. Almost there. So always wipe your tube as well in between because that stops the icing from drying and also if there's any other excess icing on the outside that will create your tube to have problems. So already, that looks like a good cake. So I think the next stage is to just give it a little inscription. I think we'll choose happy birthday. of the cake.